Hi everybody! Today we're gonna create a zombie shooter. It is a very popular game. You know there are different zombies coming from all the parts of the screen and you're in the center and using a gun you have to kill them and survive as long as possible. Today we're creating the most important parts of the game. We're gonna make a very basic game and in the second video we will include some improvements, some superpowers, different levels, difficulties and basically all the things that come to my mind. Even though this video is going to be quite long, so sit down, open your laptop, and if you are ready, let's get started. As we usually do, let's delete the cut and let's paint all the characters that we need. Let's begin with the main character. I'm going to make the head, it's going to be a top view of the character. So um, let's take um, brown hair. Let's make it here. And now zoom in. Pick the eraser. Let's make it smaller. 15 for example. And let's make something like this for the hair. Okay, that's enough. Now let's make the, the body. I'm gonna make a white t-shirt here. And now with the reshape tool, I'm gonna modify, I'm gonna make it curved, I'm gonna modify the shape of it. Okay, same here, press there, curved, and okay. Now select back. There we go. So now let's make the arms. Rectangle, let's take kind of orange color, maybe this one could be good. Well, it depends on the skin your character is going to have. This is one arm. It's gonna be holding a gun, so let's put it here. Let's send it back. And now select, copy, paste, rotate, Let's put it here and back as well. And now let's make a gun, which is gonna be black. Something simple, something like that. And there we go, here we have it. All right, I'm gonna make a very simple animation to make the, the character walk. So I'm gonna need four costumes. This is the first, but now right click, duplicate, and I'm gonna create the legs and shoes. How? Well, let's suppose um, he's wearing jeans. So I'm gonna make something like that, no outline. I'm gonna send it back and using black, let's make the shoes. Send them back. Okay, that looks good. I am going to copy this, copy paste and put it here so that the right um, leg is at the back. And let's copy this as well. Copy paste. I'm gonna put it there and back. Maybe this one could be a little bit narrower. Yeah, that's okay. So we have this, this. The third is gonna be like the first. So let's put it here. One, two, three. And the fourth is gonna be similar to this one, but the legs are gonna be on the other side. So let's take this to select two. You click on one, press and hold shift and click on the other one. I'm gonna pass it here. And this one, click, press and hold shift here and pass it there. So we have something like this. Let's code it quickly and after that we will continue making the characters. Let's go to code and when green flag clicked, Forever, 
this program is going to be checking if there's a key pressed, any key pressed. If it is, next costume and wait 0.2 seconds. But if there aren't any keys pressed, we're going to switch costume to costume one or three, because in these costumes, the characters, the character is not moving. So green flag, if I press a key, it looks like it is moving. But if I don't press any key, it stops here. So that's perfect. And now let's create the zombies. Let's begin. Well, first of all, I'm going to name this character main character. And now let's begin with the zombies. How am I going to make that? Well, it, it's going to be quite simple. I'm going to right click duplicate this one. I'm going to call it zombie. And now let's go to the costumes of the zombie. And first of all, I'm going to change the color of the hair. I'm going to make it darker. Also the color of the t-shirt. Let's make it, I don't know, dark green, for example. Okay. And I'm also going to paint some blood on it. So, well, by using this, I'm going to, well, paint some blood. Also in the arms. And obviously the zombies are not going to be holding a gun. So let's get rid of the gun. And let's change the position of the arms. I will have to change also the position of the blood. There we go. This one as well. And now, how are you going to pass this to the other um, costumes? Very simple. Let's go to these costumes and let's get rid of everything except the legs and the shoes. Here, everything, because there are no legs or shoes. And here, everything except legs and shoes. And now, come to this one. You make a square to select everything. Copy. You come here paste you come here paste you come here paste and there we go perfect let's make the last uh, object which is the bullet that's gonna be a simple gray circle with a little outline something like that center it everything should be centered okay in the screen because if the bullet is not centered or if the main character is not centered either when we continue with the code you will well we will have some problems let's name it bullet and let's go to the main character let's code it how are we gonna code it well um, when green flag clicked again forever my program is gonna be checking if I press up arrow, left arrow, right arrow, or down arrow, or, well, in my case, I prefer to use WASD, but that's my, well, my personal liking. So, if key W pressed, something will happen. The same with S. And now let's duplicate from here to have D. And A. How is this going to work? Well, I'm gonna show you one backdrop which is quite interesting to understand this. Look, the horizontal axis is X. If we move right, we have to add something to this. And if we move left, we have to subtract or add a, uh, a negative number. In the vertical axis, the Y, the same. If we move up, we add a number. If we move down, we subtract or we add a negative number. So W uh, is going to be used to move up. So we're going to change Y by 3, for example. That's OK. With S, 
which is also in the vertical axis. We're going to change y by a negative number, negative 3, for example, to move right the d, that is the horizontal. So we're going to change x by a positive number. And in the case of a, we're going to, move, we're going to be moving left. We change x, y, x, because it's the horizontal axis, by a negative number. And now, well, let's get rid of this backdrop because it's not necessary anymore. And, well, let me go to the zombie because we're not going to use this in the zombie. And look, as you see, I can move my main character, but it's not pointing towards my mouse pointer, which is something quite simple. Here, at the beginning, I'm gonna add point towards mouse pointer. It has to be outside the eaves, okay? And now, look, I can move it. It is pointing to the mouse pointer, so that's excellent. All right, um, let's change the size of these characters because obviously they are too big. Let's see, well, 35 is okay. And the zombie, 35 as well. The bullet has to be smaller. 40 is okay. So let's begin with the code of the bullet. But before creating the code in the bullet, I'm gonna go to the main character because I'm gonna make a third program which is necessary. And that's gonna be when green flag clicked forever, if mouse down, we're gonna create a clone of the bullet. That's in control create clone of bullet. I have these names, zombie bullet, because I have named these objects. If you haven't, you will have sprite one, sprite two. Okay, so keep that in mind. And in order not to be able to shoot constantly, because this is a gun, it's not a machine gun, we're gonna wait for one second. And now we can go to the bullet. And the original bullet, the one that is here in the middle of the screen is not going to be visible because, I mean, it doesn't make sense. So we're going to hide it and we're going to code the clones of the bullet. So here in control, when I start as a clone, what is the bullet going to do? Well, first of all, it's going to go to the main character because the bullet has to start from the main character. So go to main character and the bullet has to point in the same direction the main character is. So how do we do that? Point in direction. And how do we get the direction of the main character? We can do it in um, sensing. So let's go to sensing. And here, uh, start on the on the right uh, drop down menu, take main character and here pick direction and put it here. After that, we can show the bullet because the bullet was hidden because the original was hidden as well. And let's begin the movement. The movement is going to be happening. Could be move 15 steps to make a fast movement until the bullet is touching the edge of the screen. So touching edge. And once it is touching the edge, we're going to delete this clone. Let's see, because there will be a few things that we have to fix, but I'm going to show you um, what it looks like now. Okay, apparently we can shoot. Well, actually we can shoot, but as you see, the bullet starts more or less in the head of my main character. That's because in Scratch we have different layers and the bullet is in a upper layer than the character, which does not make sense. So let's go to the bullet and we're going to go to back layer. And now when we shoot, that does not happen. But still the bullet, when it goes to main character, goes to the center of the main character, which is here. So you see the bullet over there. So what can we do to fix that? We're gonna make the bullet move before it shows so that it starts in the gun. 
This is not necessary, this is, I mean, some details to make it better, but it's not very difficult. We're gonna move the bullet before it shows how much, maybe 15 pixels, 16, well, I don't know exactly. Let's try. But I think that was quite good. Obviously, obviously this number depends on the size of your character, the size of your bullet, if they are centered in the canvas or not. So, well, keep in mind, you're not gonna be using exactly the same numbers I'm using, okay? Well, not necessarily. And now let's go to the zombies. In the case of the zombies, again, we're gonna be creating clones. The clones are gonna be created every three seconds, for example, and the zombies have to start on the edges of the screen. Let's see how to make that. First of all, when green flag clicked forever, we're gonna be creating clones of myself every three seconds, as we said. The original zombie is gonna be hidden, so we're not going to see it. But here in control, the clones will have two programs. Well, one of them is gonna be quite simple. Forever, next costume, and wait 0.2 seconds so that they are moving the legs. I know we said 0.2 here. Yes, we did. Okay. But um, apart from that, the clones are going to go to the center of the screen. They are going to point in a random direction. So point in direction from 1 to 360. Although direction in Scratch is different, it goes from um, negative, well, 179 until 180. Scratch understands this and it's gonna have the same effect, so no problem. And once the zombies in the center of the screen pointing to, well, a random direction, we're gonna move it back, okay, until it touches the edge. As the objects cannot get out of the Scratch screen, you can put here, for example, 500 st steps. So the zombies will move uh, backwards uh, at the maximum until they are touching the edge, basically. And after that, we can show them and they are going to be moving. You can use repeat until. They are going to be moving at a speed of two steps until they are touching a bullet or they are touching the main character. As I said, or, we say or, until touching the main character or touching the bullet. If they are touching the bullet, well, let's duplicate from here. If they are touching the bullet, we're going to delete the clone. But if I'm gonna duplicate. If they are touching the main character, we're going to broadcast a message, which is gonna be game over. This message is not um, visible in the screen, but received by other characters and they will react to that message as we want. So, um, well, let's see first of all if this works. Oops, something wrong here. Let's see what we did. Oh yes, um, we didn't tell the zombies to point towards the main character, which is um, obvious. There we go. Let's see now, perfect. You see it is chasing me. If I shoot, I kill it. Yes, that's perfect. If it touches me, they stop and, um, well, they stop, they broadcast game over, they stop this movement and let's see what happens. I'm gonna go to backdrops. In backdrops, I'm gonna make two backdrops. One for playing, which could be, let's see, for example, let's make a gradient backdrop from blue 
uh, from blue to black, that's good. And let's paint another backdrop. This one could be gray, dark gray. And here I'm gonna write game over using a white um, text. Game over. There we go. Let's name it game over. And now here in the code of the backdrops, we could say when green flag clicked, switch backdrop to play. And when I receive game over, switch backdrop to game over and we're going to stop all. So the game will stop. If you want in the main character, when it receives game over, we can hide it. So at the beginning of the game, when green flag clicked, we will have to show it. And let's see. There we go. We can move it. We can shoot at them. And if someone touches us, game over. If I click on the green flag, everything resets again. As you see that um, the zombies, the zombies start too quickly. So maybe the creation of the zombies, which is there, could take a couple of seconds to begin, so that we get ready before we start. And also, maybe in the main character, we could say that at the beginning of the game, it goes to the center of the screen, which is X0, Y0. Okay. So imagine the one game finishes here when we click on the green flag, it starts in the center and after two seconds the zombies start to come towards us. All right, so this is the end of the tutorial, but not the end of the game. Well, actually with this game you can play and have a lot of fun, but as I said, I want to bring another video, including some improvements, superpowers, and other things that will make this game even more and more fun. For the moment, try this, get it ready, have fun, show it to your family, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.